Hi, this is another short video in the Random Linux Stuff playlist. This one's on the naming scheme of network interface cards, or NICs. We'll have a look at how interface naming used to be and how it is now, and we will see the pros and cons, and finally we'll change from the current naming scheme to the old naming scheme, just for the fun of it. Historically, in Unix and Linux, NICs were called ETH0, ETH1, etc. This was a very short and clear naming scheme. The first interface that would be detected during the boot process would be ETH0, and the second one, ETH1, and so on. So if you only had a single NIC, you could rest assured that its name would always be ETH0. However, there were some potential problems. If you modified the hardware by adding or removing devices, the device names would be subject to change. And since the NICs would receive their settings from config files, it wasn't very unlikely that all of a sudden a NIC could get a different address, which would result in security issues or malfunctioning software. And I'm sure you can think of some problems yourself. So the naming scheme had to change, and that's what's happened. Today the names of NICs are no longer determined by the order of detection, but by the physical position. So we call this the Predictable Network Interface Naming Scheme. Now the complexity is not just a matter of strange names, but also multiple types of names. Now how does that work? Let's just have a look at them. The first type would be for BIOS determined interfaces on board. So EN01, where EN stands for Ethernet and the O for on board. And the 1 obviously is the index number. The second type would be ENS, where ENS will be followed by a slot number. So for example, ENS192, ENS224, etc. Or we can run into the third type, which would contain the bus position and the slot. So this would be represented by ENP, where P stands for bus position, followed by a number, and then the slot, followed by a slot number. So we get interfaces like ENP11S0, ENP88S0, etc. We'll get back to that in a second, but let's just first check a random VM that runs Rocky. When we check our interfaces with IP link, we see that this machine has two NICs. Now how does this naming represent the physical location? We can also list these devices in Sysclass Net, which contains the symbolic links to the actual devices. Um, and then with UDEF, which is responsible for managing devices of all sorts, so also for networking, we can get some more information about our devices. The UDEF admin command has a lot of options. We're not going to discuss all of them here. This is for another video. But when we run the test built in argument with the network ID, then it will tell us something more about this device. So it gives us information about the bus, the slot, and at the end of the line, you see the actual device name, or at least part of it. Now, this virtual machine is hosted by KVM. I've got another one which is hosted by ESXi. And when we run the IP link on this one, we get a different name, completely different name. ENS192. We also see an alternative name, which is ENP11S0, which resembles the, the one that we saw in the previous VM. The reason why we have this ENS192 is because on ESXi, the PCIe hot plug has been enabled, which gives us an additional name. So now all of a sudden, we've got one single interface having two different names. And in Sysclass Net, we see the actual device name that's being used, which is ENS192. Now let's run UDEF ADM once more, but now for the ENS192. And we can see the slot number, which is 192. And above that, we see the alternate device name. Now if for whatever reason you decide that you want to go back to the old naming scheme, which is possible, um, maybe just for fun, I know situations where the software simply does not like this new predictable naming scheme. So then you will have to go back to ETH0 and ETH1. So in order to be able to do that, we have to change the kernel command line in the grub configuration. We will add a parameter that tells the system not to use the predictable names, but use the old names. And since we're at it, we're also going to use the old way of configuring the interface by using the ifconfig config file. So what we'll do is we're logged in, of course, and we're going to edit the Etsy default grub file. And in this file, we're going to add to the end of the grub command line for Linux, we are going to add net.ifname equals zero. Then we save the file. And the next thing we do is we're going to rebuild the grub.cfg file by running grub2 make config. 
And of course we have to reboot, but before we do that, we have to make sure that the configuration for ETH0 is in place, because ENS192 is no longer functioning. So we have to set up a config for ETH0. So we go to Etsy sysconfig network scripts and we open a new file, which is the config file for ETH0. And we enter the data in there, like the IP address, the DNS server, the gateway, and some other stuff. And of course the good old ETH0. And finally, we can reboot. So when the system has rebooted, we can log in again. And then we check our connections using NMCLI, and we see we've got ETH0, but we also still have ENS192. So we want to get rid of that. So we run NMCLI connection delete. We run one final check to see whether it's absolutely gone, and it's gone. So we're very happy, and we're done.